So I've got visitors today, Hayden and Harley from Alabama. And uh, Hayden is a budding blacksmith. And um, I may not be much better than he is, but I might have a little more experience. So we'll see if there's anything I can teach him that he doesn't already know. So I'm going to show him how to make these little cabinet pulls I make. I make them with several different styles of ends. And we're going to be going from this little piece of half inch by quarter inch stock, four inches long, to that as the finished product. So the first step is to get this heating and to neck down each end. And I'll probably, I'll probably show you how to do a couple of different finial styles. You can, uh, you can do a lot of things with finials. I tuck my elbow in so that the hammer is kind of swinging from a fulcrum, if that makes sense, and neck in from both sides. So I'm going to dress that back down to thickness. I don't know if you notice how I'm using the edge of the hammer as basically a fuller or a peen. And then the last step here is going to be chamfering. And I need, I need a better pair of tongs. I need a, I've gotten by with these tongs this whole, you know, for years making these, but it would be better to have a pair of box jaw tongs for this. Or at least tongs that fit. So there we go. I've left about a square. You want at least a square of, of material on the end. Getting even consistent shoulders like this. See, I missed, I missed struck. But that's not going to be a problem. Okay, you might look at that and be like, oh, that's, I can't fix that, it's horrible, nothing I can do with it. And really, you still might be able to make the end and it'd be okay. But there's a fairly easy fix for that. So get it good and hot. So you see how crooked that is, how off-center it is. So I'm going to lay it with uh, this side up. And I'm going to strike half on, half off. And now it's going to be crooked the other way. So you hit it this way and then come back and hit behind where it started to, um, where the neck started to curve. And just kind of tweak with it. I'm going to use the corner of the anvil. And the trick to not getting fish lips and a cold shut on the end is to hit fairly hard and use that um, use that corner as kind of a fuller. All right, here we go. So we're gonna go half on, half off. And you wanna divide the material in the middle When you're spreading the metal, you always work from the center out, right? Right. Yes. And it's a good idea. It's a good idea to spread it um, whichever way is hardest for you. So usually it'll be easier to spread it away or to you. Whichever way is the hardest, do that first. Because you're losing heat. And as you lose heat, it'll be better to be doing the... Um, the easier one at a lower heat and coming towards you.
I got that one a little wonky. Yeah, it's not too horrible. So now that we've got this one bent, we can go ahead and punch the holes. And I'm gonna use a tight bolster because I plan on mounting this pull with nails. And if you practice, and yes, you may hit your hand and it will hurt, but if you practice cold punching, a lot of times it's easier and faster than hot punching. And with practice, it would be hard to be any faster with a drill press. I'm just trying to make sure it sits fairly evenly. See, we're a little bit off here. If that's really bad, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll the high corner or whatever, I'll tip it over the edge and just tweak it until it's close. But if it's real bad, you can go to the vise and twist the whole works. Yeah, it, it's probably, it'll work. But anyway, once you let it get down where it's not too hot and it won't pop the scale off, then you can cool it in water the rest of the way, um, but stop while the water still sizzles off and then put your oil or wax on. <laughs> 